Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at creating and co-authoring on documents in SharePoint Online. So as we have discussed in other videos of mine, the benefits of SharePoint Online is that because this technology runs in the cloud, end users have access to documents anywhere, anytime, as long as they have access to the internet. SharePoint Online also seamlessly integrates with the Office apps that we're familiar with, for example, Word, PowerPoint and Excel. And as a result, colleagues can work collaboratively on the same document together at the same time, thus mitigating the need to create multiple versions of a document, of which from a compliance and governance perspective, doesn't allow a company to maintain and control the documents shared via email, for instance. In regards to co-authoring itself, SharePoint Online automatically, in the back end, creates a version history audit trail for the documents stored in its document library, improving the collaboration amongst colleagues as there's no need for files to be stored as draft, final, version one, two, or no, this really is the final, final document of which we all may be culprits of doing. So let's jump straight into the demo and start off by looking at how to create files in SharePoint, how to upload to SharePoint Online, and lastly, looking at co-authoring. So here we are in my SharePoint Online team site and this team site is called the Wellness Center Spa and I'm going to go on over to my document library called Spa Documents. So to create a new file in SharePoint Online we can go to New and then we can either choose from a um, new folder or we can pick to create a new word. PowerPoint or Excel document from the list. Do note that your company can create their own document templates that can be branded into your company colours and logos. Now in the past we have developed an ingrained way of working and that has been to create files by opening up Word, PowerPoint or an Excel file working on that file and then saving a copy of that file to our file explorer, our local drive. We have then worked on that file for some time before sharing it with others. However, moving forward when using SharePoint, Microsoft would like us to create the files here in the correct document library. The benefit of this is that the template is already set up for you and has been created in the correct place. So I'm now going to create a Word document. And you will notice here that SharePoint has opened the file in the web browser and it has automatically saved the document, but has solely titled it as document. So let's go ahead and rename this file. A key thing I want to highlight when using the Microsoft 365 apps in the web browser is that there's no save button. Even if I go to file, you'll see here that it says, where's my save button? There is no save button because we are automatically saving your document. You will notice that it will tell you the status of your file at the top of your screen. It will either say saving or saved. So let's close this file now. So that's how you create a document in SharePoint Online. Now how do we open it? Well if you hover over the file name you will see a link. Click this and it will open in the web browser. But if you want to open it in the desktop app we can do that by going to the ellipsis and then open in app. If you start working on that document in the browser and then later on you want to move over to the desktop app, you can do so by clicking editing 
and then open in app. Now to upload a file to SharePoint from your OneDrive or File Explorer, you can do this easily. First of all, you need to go to the correct document library where you wish this file to be placed, then select Upload. From here, we can upload either files, folders or templates. We then need to locate the file, either selecting it and clicking Open. Or you can drag and drop the file to the correct document library by opening up your OneDrive or your File Explorer. If it takes a little time to show in your document library, do a little refresh because remember SharePoint is running in a web browser. So what actually is co-authoring? Well, co-authoring is where documents that are stored in your SharePoint Online document libraries are accessible to every team member. And they can then collaboratively and simultaneously work on these documents together. Then, when changes are made to the documents, both you and your teammates will see these changes updated on the screen instantly, before your very eyes. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you will see everybody in that document at the same time, but it does mean that only one version of that document is being edited. There is not multiple files dotted around in everybody's email or saved on OneDrive or File Explorer. It's just one version of the truth. So what do we need to co-author on a file? Well, we need to have our shared storage area. Well, check, that's our OneDrive and SharePoint element. We also need the apps to support co-authoring. Check, that's our Microsoft 365 apps that we're familiar with, so Word, PowerPoint and Excel. We also need co-authoring friendly documents, and that's our, our modern file formats that are shown here on the screen. And lastly, we need the correct edit permissions for our colleagues. So your colleagues must have the permissions to access and edit those documents. So we're going to go back into the demo now and I'm going to show you what co-authoring looks like and how to use it. When more than one person is working on the document, you will see them present in the document here and you'll see the changes that are being made in real time. Here I'm in the document myself and I can see that Megan is also working on this document at the same time. Should you only wish to review a document and make suggestions, not edits, turn on review mode. Your changes will then only show as a different colour in the text that can be accepted or rejected by others. Should you have the need to provide feedback to your colleagues, use the comment feature to at mention colleagues that will highlight particular details in the document that requires their attention. They will then receive an email detailing your feedback alongside a button that takes them directly to the documents and the location of your feedback. When you return to the document that others have worked on, you will clearly see what changes have been made. I don't have any on my screen here, but any blue dots show that a document indicates that content has been inserted. Speech bubbles highlight new comments. Different coloured text indicates where a person shows suggestions. And like I said earlier, you can accept or decline these suggestions.
We can also mark completed tasks off, resolve follow-ups, or delete comments where necessary. If there are times when you want to work on a document quietly by yourself, let's say you are in accounts and you're running the monthly payroll, so you want to work on a complex formulas without interruptions, you can do so using the checkout feature. I like to think of this scenario of checking out a book from a library. You take your book to the self-serve checkout or the assistant, you hand over your card, the necessary steps are actioned, and then you can take out that book to read in your own time. Now this scenario doesn't fit into the checkout feature idea entirely because when you have checked out a file in SharePoint, other people can still read the file, but they won't be able to edit the document or see your changes until you check the item back in. To check the file back into the document, we need to do the reverse steps. You will notice here that we are then forced to add a comment. This is beneficial for version history, which we're going to talk about in a future video, particularly if you're working on confidential or sensitive documents that require detailed audit reports to be pulled. So there you have it, we have covered creating and uploading files to SharePoint Online and we have also covered co-authoring and the checkout, check-in features that are available. Thank you for watching, please do like this video and subscribe to my channel, that way I can continue to bring you more videos in the very near future.